saying, I say that in order to be made of the Ratzon the Melucha, there has to be the, the consent, as it were, within the person, the Melech, to begin with. That this is something that is, that is virtuous and worthy to do. And therefore, four lines down from you say, Kameshalayim become Yanim. Go back a line, third line, third line from the top of you say, Abba Achlatazu in a dain shum de tia ham shachavis That decision that he's, it's befitting that he might be king. So there's no uh, expression of it, there's no movement in that direction at all. And it doesn't create any spirally speaking to say an expectation or uh, an excitement of small e in any way for its fulfillment. It's completely uh, a latent and a, a, academic theoretical thing. Not so much academic, it's not seichel, but theoretical. We see in our own experience as many things a person decides that this is worthy of wanting. It doesn't have to actually want, but well, you should want this. There's actually no manifested will. Years can pass. The decision is there, but there's not going to be any awakening of any actual desire. That's what he means by the Amshach and his pilots, an actual desire for it. And so he's not acting upon it. This is not called Rotson, really. Even though we just did, we said that he has to have already before the Rotson. But it's not really Rotson in the classic sense, because Rotson is something the person will, is engaged upon acting upon. More accurately, we would call it Machshava Rotson, a thought and a will. Put the, thought, the will before the Machshava. The will and thought. What exactly the chilek is? I can say the words, I don't know. Well, now he's telling us actually. But what causes the machshava? If not the rotsens, I don't understand that. At any rate, it's more appropriate to to relegate this haskoma to machshava rather than an actual will. We understand what that means, right? Just question is what causes that machshava. So the answer is taka as we're talking aloud. It's taka not rotsen. It's inyan atzmi. End of the day, melucha is inyan atzmi, and the reason for that is because nisava kodesh baruch and atzmos to be a melech. That's where it starts. Higher than the rotsen after the nisava, or or the Pechira Chavshis in Atmos, that's set in motion every other, every other process. Hence, he calls it Machshove more than Rotzen, because Rotzen is already an articulated stage in the process of Ishtaushalus. But this is not that, this is Machshove before that. So, why do we call it Mash Nikr B'Shem Rotzen? So, why even call it Rotzen? Call it Achlotes Atmos, the decision of the free choice of God that's precipitated by nothing before it has no reason, has no justification. It's just him. Just say that. Answer, we, we call it Rotson because it is as it is a Bishema Mushu, it's like a borrowed term. Kim it's because it's because the achlota, which is an atmos, that because of that Nasa actually achakarotsum bapel, that that actually gives rise to the actual uh, will. And when is that manifested, the actualized will, which again, which then will lead to the malchus, to the, rather to the gzeres, to the mitzvahs, that's how the achtore, the achtore does that. So since the achlote, nothing would happen if there wasn't this achlote in Atmos, we call that rotzen. Even not really is not rotzen, which is already part of the system and so on. There's no system yet here. Even though the Achlata decision in Atmos, we cannot call it Rotsen, that's giving it a definition, it's already linking it to a system which does fundamentally does not exist. In the Kib- but since it's the cause of it, in the Kibbim Shem said, Achlata Zu Yove Yacha Kacha Rotsen Agolev, since in the end it's from this decision within Atmos that he wants to be Melech, the Sav for the Dir Betachtoinim, and that will then give rise to the manifested Rotsen which will happen when the Jews coronate him. So therefore it comes out that it's not really fundamentally novel or new. 
It's all along he wanted this, and if he didn't want it, 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 it wouldn't happen. Period. So I've, it wouldn't happen, we wouldn't exist, there wouldn't be anything. So it's not a chedish mikoda, af This is critical, even though it comes in a novel way. It comes in a way that it's not revealed at all, and it takes us to manipul- manipulate it and cause it and be it by dedicating ourselves. So it comes, but derech is chachus. It comes in a way that is novel. It's, oh, what's the novel part? The novel part is that the thing actually happens, but that it could, and there was a decision that it should, that's not novel. That God decided, without which nothing happens. Clear? Yeah, so we call this decision in Atmos God's will, even though it's not the precise term, because will already implies otherness and the whole process of Ishtalshalus, which this is in Atmos is utterly beyond beyond. The fish it's because of him and his cause. Again, the Yumshach Achakachin in Arotzen. So that's why we started up because afterwards the Rotsam will emerge. That's why we began by saying that that the reason that the people can be made the Rotsam be the will to be king because he already has this will, but it's not really a will. It's a decision. In Fatsmos, it's a decision to have this thing called will, and the will there is not revealed at all. It will take us to bring it out. That's all part of his decision. That requires the achtar. The chiddush later in the Maimah will be that even without us, it's also a pearl. So what do you need us for? So we learned the answer to that. We'll learn it again when we get to it. That that's not just an answer to a question. That's like, what's this all about? Creation, me, everything. So like before we get to that, he makes his case slowly. Till now, he spoke about an earthly king. As we were talking about the earthly king, I was already referencing the Nimshal, the Yevishta, but the Moshe was actually talking about an earthly king. So for the earthly king, there is the decision as it were that Roy is Melech, that's all it is. There's no Ratzin. The decision, Roy, now I'm saying that for earthly king is hardwired to have that decision. That's how we are made. I just, well, that's the difference between, I guess, Buster, like in a Marshall Dembel and Imshal at the end, end of the day, right? Because by an earthly king, there can't be this atzmistic uh, choosing of being a malucha, and there needs to be the am, and there needs to be that as Iris. By the Eberster, it's all atzmi, 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 and he right. allowed us the novelty of choosing him, you know, and the Correct. Or whatever. Correct. Uh, but for the, for the mortal king, why does he make this decision that Royal is Melech? Where does it come from? So for the Abishta, uh, that's Pchiras Atmos. There's, there's no reason for that. As God shows, it's all part of the Nisava that he wants a Dirb which is what this whole thing of Malchus is. But I'm saying a human being is hardwired. He's hardwired deeply. That's the whole end of Hakkab, we're all a Melech at the core. And the reason we're hardwired that way because we're made in the image of God. And since the Abish had decided, Pearl Mambash, he wants to be a Melech. And that decision is in Atmos. So that now, even though for him it's a Pechirach of Shis, completely the true free choice, for us that now becomes a hardwired reality. That deep down at the core of every human being is this deep desire to affect the whole world. To, to be a Melech in whatever way possible. For him or her. But he's saying... In actuality, the, the classic Melech uh, can never actualize at all. And it would take the people to stir that. But but what are they going to be stirring through the Achtara? A hardwired already Royal Lies Melech. Not even conscious of it necessarily, the person. So deeply. That's a very uh, of work. Yeah. But by the Abishter, the whole thing starts with his free choice. Now, once he's made that choice, that royal is melech. That's now, that's now the nature of the human being at its core. The core of the human being is the sense of his effect, influence, and connection with everything else. It's all because of a reflection of the divine, and uh, since that's God's essential decision, to be melech, 
and to have a relationship with us, that is our deepest need, but it's extremely uh, inarticulated. But we might suggest that it would manifest like this. Since we're hardwired that way, it would mean this. Now, what I'm saying is true, I believe, that it, uh, if a person does not feel that he somehow contributed to, his in, to the world, that's what Melech means, and had influence on, on another person, He's going to be fundamentally uh, unsatisfied. Fundamentally, very deeply. Why? Because the Rots and Lies Melech, which means to have Ashba and a relationship with others and to be Mashpia in some way, is rooted essentially because that's what God decided in His essence, and that thereafter becomes our hardwired, very deep core identity, this deep sense of our interconnectedness and I have something to contribute to you and to the world. Now that's actually what Malchus means. As we talk further, this is, this is absolutely true. Malchus means, amongst other things, the sovereign value of the human being. Every, every human being as a sovereign means intrinsic value. But that sovereign value, implicit in that sovereign value is the idea of Melech, of being a king and having an influence. So our sovereign value lies in that, that we have effect. We have a shpa. Each person has a unique contribution to make to the world. Bishvili nivroil. That's why Hashem made Adam and Chavel, Rosh Hashanah, the, the singular human beings. To convey this truth that every human being is this singular, in that sense, entity that needs to contribute something intrinsic to the world without which the world is lacking. And the whole world is for this person's contribution. Who is that person? Every single one of us. And this is true of Jew and Lahav the non Jew. Adam wasn't Jewish. Actually, the Shema was, his Guf wasn't. Well, his Guf was Jewish too, I guess, in the sense that Jewish bodies descend from there as well. but. The Jewish identity, the Pchida is the, is the, actually in the end is the Guf. Anyway, let's not get distracted. So this idea, what are we saying? This is Hakil again. This is Hakil, which is perhaps why the Rebbe Kochzach in this sense, a very pre-Mashiach Mifza, this whole Hakil business, um, which didn't exist before. Hakil was a mitzvah that was in the books. Mashiach comes will have it again. He had no shaykhs. And a uh, Shinas Hakel, that's completely enough. A year of Hakel, it's a year of Hakel. So, Mitzvah the king did on Mitzvah Sukkot, once in seven years, and the Mitzvah Mitzvah stood. Hasn't happened for thousands of years, and when Mitzvah comes, it'll happen again. It makes for them a whole thing, and a Shinas Hakel, and then said it doesn't end. Shinas Hakel continues. Because what Hakel lies at the core, that's what it's expressing all of this. It's expressing it. Every Yid is a Melech, every Yid contributes something indispensable to the whole purpose of creation because every year every human being is reflected in the divine and that's God's deepest essential desire and, and that's something we cannot escape we're now we're hardwired that way if I'm not to rephrase that our deepest need is to be needed if we don't feel that we're contributing in some way a person can get all he wants Anything he wants, but he doesn't, if, he, if he's, there's not some area that he's making a difference, it's, it's the ultimate neur neurosis. Our deepest need is to be needed, that's the Melech. The Melech is here to serve the people. In the end, he, they want him, they need him, we want you to lead us, we want you to guide us, inspire us. That's the person, the human being's deepest need is to be needed, not to need. That's external. I need so that I can be, what do I need for in the end? I need so that I can be functional and useful so that I can contribute and be needed if I'm sick. So what, what, you know, what, how much can I give? If I'm healthy and I have a lot of money and resources, may God bless us all with that, especially all of you in business. So then you can contribute a lot. And you must, if you're given it, it means you have to. That's why integral to Rosh Hashanah is also, you know, all 
we talk about the life and panos and yeah, all these things the time of the Akhtar, what's yeah because in order to make god king and to actualize his purpose and for us to be a reflection of him and melech we need children we need panos and we need health and all in abundance let's continue and it's yeah we finished the paragraph so we'll continue the next paragraph which we've been talking about we've been applying this applying this to hashem so it works this way by divine design that god wants us to arouse this within him it's there the decision is there but i want you to want me so that you bring it out i could force it on you but i don't want to do that because it's not a relationship then it's not malchus we don't truly become one so likewise malchus so in order for there should be the arousal that God should be king. Now when it comes to the Abishter, like king over whom? Us? Really? We're completely incomparable to, the, to him. Now he, the, he's saying, just get this clear, this and the next statement, before I say the Hebrew words, but MS even understand this point, friends, not in the text. Even this point of being a Melech is, is ain't a bad a mortal king. Why is it a a mortal king? On the one hand, it is bad. Human beings are asking to be their leader. This is it's your world. And you cannot be a king on animals. Be a king on human beings, they have to be bad in that sense. But it's still bad in another sense. Why is it ain't a bad in another sense? Because the whole relationship with the king and the people is is just is 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 just mice of a pearl. He makes these decrees, governance. There's no intellectual, emotional relationship with him. It's Malchus, and that's his world before he came. Melech, what was he? he was a deep thinker and a deeply emotional person, a very resonant human being. So we're asking him to put this all aside and be involved in the in the affairs of state, which is which is pale mamish dicker things. And the relationship with the people is very distant. You're not getting close to anybody. There's no close relationship. The ministers a little bit, but even them, it's very limited. But the general populace, there's never even a conversation. They seen from the balcony waving. People thought we built this balcony here. I should wave to them. People actually thought that. What's this for? Here's a speech and people will wait to wave to the people below. So... It's ain't a be'erach, even for a mortal king, in that sense, relatively speaking. So in order to be it needs like a big, a big yisoyed, it's got to touch him very deeply. No, by you getting involved in the, in the governance of our lives through decrees and, and laws, practical laws, this unlocks the depth in you and there's essential deep connection with Allah all of the mileage, but it's not an obvious thing. I'm going to leave my world of intellect and, and to be busy with, with, with the streets and armies and, and uh, you know, all the things that the government, the government deals with. Sewers, changing all the water here in, in Hampstead. Decisions got to come from the top. Busy with sewers. So, Shari, in your Amalucha, Baif and Shani Malach Balayom, the union of Malucha is, what's the definition? There's no king without a people. And what does people mean? Malosh and Imamus. Imamus means calls. Calls that are, no, there's no, uh, pardon? Flames. Flames, dimmed, dimmed. There's nothing, there's no expression here. Shem dvarim nifrodim. He's being, the relationship to the people, he's dealing with things that are removed, vizorim, and foreign, but a and distant, Again, the, before he became king, is the world of seichel and philosophy. We're talking about a great intellectual, a towering giant, and now he's getting busy with with uh, building infrastructure and maintaining infrastructure and, the, and all kinds of things in the in the state, like he writes in the Altreb in, in Shari Yichanimun. So how can they touch him to start, leave your world and become involved in our world? And in our world, in a very external way, Maisa Bepel, 
The only reason it works is al yifisha gam tad mishni sa'ir but that's in the goli before they arouse this will as they achdada huskam by the abish to vahuchlad bats musay kibayachos sharei limleich. The decision was yes, as we explained before, that he's worthy to be a king, and therefore and it's and it's appropriate. For the Ebishtis Pachir Achavshes, for the human being, it's it's hardwired again to make a difference on a pale mamishnik level. We want to feel we are making a difference in a tangible level that's deeply ingrained in us at the core, because as a reflection of Hashem. So I'll continue this, how that works for the Ebishtis, how we the, the mechanics, the spiritual mechanics, and then the understanding of the exquisite depth of this, that here we Rosh Hashanah Ma'ayra the Ratzon the Mluch. And it's and it's very beautiful to be continued based on Hashem tomorrow. A wonderful day, everybody.